my name is Dr. G and I am here excited to talk about flossing. I know that a lot of people find flossing boring but it's another thing that you just do for yourself and you should feel good every time you do something good for yourself you should feel good about it. Remember what I said you are the most important person in your life and who's you know who better than you to take care of yourself. So uh, flossing is extremely important because when you do brushing, we talked about brushing last time, when you do brushing and as we spoke about brushing that we talked about circular brushing uh, that we went underneath the gums, well these teeth have another surface in between them. As you see right here, all of these teeth, that surface that is between the teeth, what's going to happen to that, to that surface? The toothbrush never goes in between that and there are all kinds of gimmicks out there. There are people who are selling these special devices that says these devices spray the water really hard and goes between your teeth and it does the same job as flossing. It's not true. Do those devices help? Yes, uh, they do help. Of course, those, those, those water jets that they actually go between the teeth and they, they remove uh, particles, they do help. But there is nothing like a nice piece of floss that actually goes in between your teeth and removes all of the particles that are left behind from eating and uh, you know uh, any any kind of activity that, that that's taken place in your mouth. So uh, I uh, it's it's best if you use a floss that is waxed because it's more smooth. It has it goes between your teeth a lot better. And of course, uh, use the floss that you like the best. I'm not going to recommend any kind of floss, how wide it is, how narrow it is, what kind of uh, uh, flavor it has. Uh, you know, get something that you like. And once you like something that you like, stick with it. And uh, don't go cheap on your floss. Get a good quality uh, floss. And if you don't like that floss, take it back to the store and get a different one. Get something that you like. And of course, when you use a floss, uh, uh, I am going to tell you how much floss you need. Do not be stingy, do not be cheap with floss uh, because you do not want to take the bacteria from one area of your mouth to the next area. Uh, uh, because sometimes some areas in your mouth, especially like the back teeth, they have a lot more bacteria harbored there and you don't want to just carry them from one side to another and kind of uh, culture the bacteria and you, you help with their growth. So you get a nice big piece of floss. I usually just kind of spread my arms like that and kind of like that. And this is a good chunk of floss that's good enough for your whole entire mouth. So uh, I use a floss like that and uh, as I say, uh, wrap it around your bad finger. I'm not flipping you off or anything like that, you know. This is, uh, you know, use this finger like that and then you leave the remainder like that. And then the other part, then wrap it around this finger again right here, as you see. And then start using this floss. Just like we talked about uh, brushing, don't just jump all the way around your mouth and say, oh, I did, that. did I do this, did I do that? And you're wondering, did I leave any tooth behind? Uh, do not leave any tooth behind. You want to go one tooth by one tooth. So you go around uh, upper right. I always start upper right because I'm right handed. If you're left handed, do the upper left. And you just take this floss and pretty nice and tight and you go around the back tooth like that. And so you go one by one between each two. And av after every time you pull out from between one tooth, you do one wrapping around this finger and then you let go of this a little bit. You see? Because now this, this area that was used on my mouth is now is under these fingers. I'm not using it in the new site. I'm actually using it on the next site. So one by one, as I got through, Take it out and then go to the next one. And of course, spend enough time because remember, when teeth are next to each other like that, teeth are cylindrical. If you uh, imagine that we have two cylinders next to each other, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. We 
have two cylinders right here. If you have two cylinders right here, and then you have a floss between these two cylinders, right? If you are flossing between these two cylinders, if this floss goes just up and down, up and down, what am I doing right here, right? I'm just cleaning right in between where the two contacts are. So this floss has to be like that. It has to hug the tooth right here. So it has to be up and down like that, okay? And then you flip it as you are still in the same area and you go around the tooth next to it like that, you see? So it has to be, the floss has to be C-shaped. Imagine this C, leather C, that's hugging your tooth. I really don't want to make flossing complicated for you and you say, ah, gosh, that's too much work. It really is not, truly is not. If you do it once, twice, three times, it becomes so easy for you. So make sure that, again, like I said, it's a C shape that goes between the teeth nicely and hugs the tooth on one area and it goes the next tooth and the next tooth and next tooth. So uh, basically, remember, when, this, you, when you are done with this floss and you're going between all of these teeth and you make sure no tooth is left behind, when you are done with this whole floss, this floss is full of bacteria. Don't lay it around, don't put it on a counter, make sure you toss it away. And I just want to tell you, uh, it, you know, when is a good time for flossing? Uh, believe it or not, the best time for flossing is when you have already brushed your teeth uh, and you are ready to go to bed. Uh, because for sure you're not going to be eating anything more, there's not going to be anything added in your mouth, and uh, you have already brushed most of the food particles, so the only thing is left is between the teeth, because if you floss between the teeth and then you brush, you run the risk of putting some of those food particles back again between your teeth with that uh, uh, the action of a brush. So, uh, it, you know, Floss is a very soothing, uh, relaxing thing. So uh, if you do it right before you go to bed, it actually helps you fall asleep. I mean, personally, that's what I do. As a dentist, that's what I do. I, I brush my teeth and I'm ready to go to bed. I just get a nice chunk of floss and <laughs> I actually floss in bed. Uh, because I already know I don't have to do it in front of a mirror. I've done it so many times and it becomes a second nature. So you can do it and then make sure there's a little trash can next to your bed uh, and toss it in there. If you can just get up and wash your hands and go to bed, that's even better because like I said, there's a lot of bacteria that harbors on the floss. So imagine if there's so much bacteria on, on the piece of floss after you're cleaning, imagine how much of that is in your mouth that with this floss you have to remove. Uh, uh, I'm, I, I actually enjoy flossing and uh, you know people who do not enjoy flossing and they see it as a hassle, uh, believe me, I really feel like they don't know what they're doing, they're not doing it correctly and, uh, and oh, by the way remember, uh, just like anything else, uh, we exercise our muscles, right? If you touch your muscles here and if you, you see you got good muscles, that means you are doing weightlifting or you're doing something that exercising that your muscles are hard and muscles are, are, are good, strong. Same goes for your gums. You have these small muscles around your gums and in between your teeth, when you are massaging these muscles, you actually strengthen those muscles. But if you do not clean those gums and you do not massage those gums as you are flossing, it will, uh, those muscles become flabby they start letting go of your teeth and you start developing gum disease. That's what called gingivitis. And we'll talk about it later in a different video. And then if it gets progressed even further, then it becomes periodontitis. It means a permanent damage to your gums and it's not reversible. So flossing is extremely important, not just for removal of the food particles. And uh, not only that would help uh, reduce tooth decay because those, those materials between your teeth, they can rot, they can decay and they can destroy teeth. But more importantly, believe it or not, more importantly, it protects your gums, strengthen your gums it, and the gums are the foundation of your uh, teeth. If you have bad gums, they will let go of your teeth. So flossing is that important. So if you only have five minutes of time on your hand and you have to choose between flossing or brushing. We should never 
come to that point. But if somebody has to choose between one or the other, guess what's most important? Flossing, not brushing. And vast majority of the people that they brush, they actually don't floss. And they think, okay, I've, I've, I've brushed, so at least I've done something. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not, you know, brushing doesn't do anything. Yes, it does, and it's absolutely necessary. But flossing is more important. So happy flossing, enjoy flossing, and uh, I am going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, demonstrate for you, uh, you know, how it's also done on, on, on a patient, actual patient, how the flossing takes place.